Hello! In today's Archeo Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. Headline number one comes from West Norfolk, where a metal detectorist uncovered fragments of a silver brooch uh, dating to the Anglo-Saxon period and thought to have its origins on continental Europe. Uh, the find has been declared treasure by the Portable Antiquities Scheme, which means that not only does the person who found the brooch uh, stand to, uh, to, to make a cut of the profits, essentially, when they're hopefully put up for sale to a local museum, but also the site itself hasn't been lost as a result of just raw plundering, as it were. So, um, in addition to a silver brooch, uh, there was a, a medieval copper jetton, or kind of like a coin or medallion found, along with a, a, a middle Anglo-Saxon sword belt mount. So these are all wonderful finds, and crucially, they have a provenance, and they uh, now a research agenda can be put forward for that part of that field where the discovery was made. And proper archaeological investigation, at some point, will occur. So this is another great story for the, for the uh, sort of, I suppose, a vindication of the portable antiquity scheme. Yet again, an object or objects have been uncovered by people out uh, essentially pursuing their hobby. And they will stand to make uh, a bit of money, which often metal detectorists uh, want to do. Uh, and also, the, 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 the cultural value of those finds won't be lost and hopefully may even be bought by a museum. Um, and uh, now, historians, archivists, archaeologists in the area can go and, uh, well, investigate the site. It's not just dug up and lost forever. So actually also, this is in addition to uh, apparently around 20,000 non-treasures uh, which are reported to the PAS um, in that area alone every year. So really, this is kind of, uh, the, the Possible Antiquity Scheme is acting almost like a, a field walk on a grand scale. People report what they find and, uh, and we, archaeologists, get to take advantage of that information. So a great story, headline number one. Headline number two is with regards to Frankenstein bog bodies uh, having been uh, uncovered in uh, the island, or rather on the island of South uh, Uist. Now, these bodies, two of them, uh, were found in the fetal position, one male, one female, and almost immediately the archaeologists involved thought there's something wrong here. Uh, the jaw doesn't seem to match up with the skull on this woman, this kind of thing. Um, it was Mike Parker Pearson who came up with the idea of uh, employing some DNA, DNA? DNA analysis to, uh, to see whether or not the different parts belong to the same people. Turns out, they didn't, actually. A total of six uh, individuals were used to create these two individuals. Uh, creates probably the most appropriate word here, because they were essentially for forged together by people, uh, human action. And they were actually also, they were buried three to six hundred years um, after uh, they had died. So that these, these bodies had been hanging around in the community. Now, um, there, is, there are a couple of explanations, potentially. One of them is that maybe they were hanging around as some sort of totem, almost, and when a bit fell off, maybe when someone's jaw or a head fell off, they replaced it with some new uh, material. But I actually quite like the idea, the analysis, that these actually came to represent the ancestors. They were no longer individuals, they were now comprised of many people, and therefore they were many people. They were the ancestors of the community. So in that sense, uh, it's a fascinating find, a good sort of uh, way into the mind, the way that people thought in the past about death and the dead. And also it's worthwhile mentioning that they were dipped into um, uh, a peat bog to aid the preservation process as well. So uh, this, this hints as well at maybe the reasons why peat uh, bodies are found. Perhaps there's a willful preservation going on. Interesting. And um, it's also, as well as probably worthwhile mentioning, I don't really approve the use of the word Frankenstein in this context. I don't think it, it uh, you know, these aren't Frankenstein's monster. They are, they're probably much more, um, well, frankly, much more uh, sober and serious than that. But, um, yeah, people can't resist a good headline. Anyway, check out headline number two for more on that. Headline number three comes from Rome, where archaeologists have declared war um, on the cats that, that roam the city. Rome is famous, obviously, Rome the city. Hey. Uh, Rome is obviously famous for its monuments and its heritage and its history, but also for essentially feral cats uh, that, gang, that run around in gangs in uh, certain communities, and more often than not actually will hang around amongst the ruins in Rome, in the Forum, etc. Now, there's actually a cat shelter, which recently applied to either toilets to its uh, facilities, or facility to its facilities, as it were, um, and uh, this flagged up the problem, really, to archaeologists who were brought in as a planning sort of process, as it were. Um, the, uh, the site being uh, the Lago di Torre Argentina, I probably haven't pronounced that correctly, but it's where they believe 
Caesar was stabbed to death. And um, uh, this particular shelter is essentially uh, being uh, being targeted now by archaeologists who want to, to highlight the problem of having these cats roaming and ultimately being fed by people who visit um, uh, ruins and, and the, 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 the the, the general monuments, uh, sites, the, 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 the fragile ledges, this kind of thing, where they, are, they just lounge and they, they are doing damage bit by bit, um, not least through, their, through their, um, their natural processes, as it were, through their mess. Anyway, this seems as though it's not really going to be resolved anytime soon because the mayor of Rome, who's up for re-election, re does not want uh, to stir up um, too much anti-cat sentiment, or rather doesn't want to be associated with it, uh, because essentially uh, he wants the cat vote, um, as it says at the end. Uh, not that cats can vote, but obviously there are many cat lovers in Rome, and uh, he doesn't want to, to, to annoy them. Uh, but who knows, maybe after after the, the election uh, this, this can be revisited, and some sort of balance can be found. And that really seems to be what the story is about. Just finding a balance between having cats who are there anyway, and also the monuments looking after them. Because um, it seems that, I don't know, Italian archaeologists have a lot of trouble getting people to look after their history. And uh, the cats, oh, it's a whole new layer. Anyway, that's headline number three. Check that out for more on, uh, well, on that story. For all those stories and, the, and some other archaeological stories from today and the past couple of days, check out the links below in the underbar. You may well notice that this video is being filmed using my iPhone, but that's because, frankly, um, the, uh, if I was to film this in 1080p, it would take uh, a, you know, a good four or five hours to upload. And, you know, you don't want that with, it, with just a news bulletin. So uh, these ones will continue to be on my iPhone. Nice, quick, easy, sharp and straight to use so you can enjoy the news stories below. So there you go, I'm off to do uh, bits and bobs uh, in the office, but also actually around and about. I'm probably going to get a train into Newcastle. Uh, anyway, you don't need to know that. Enjoy the news stories. Bye-bye.